have the real honor of having Professor Jose Maria Sison. Jose Maria, uh, Professor Jose Maria Sison is currently the chairman of the International League of People's Struggles, which is an incredibly important mass united front of organizations from around the world. We, he is also the founding chairman of the Communist Party of the Philippines which has been engaged in a people's war for over 40 years and is, has been, is an incredibly important for political force in the Philippines. Yeah, the, the, uh, Professor Jose Maria Sison has been a chief ideologue in the Maoist movement around the world and has had a lot of, and his work has had an impact not only on the revolutionary movement in his own country, which has been considerable considering the fact that he, his key work, Philippine Society and Revolution, was an attempt, a serious attempt to actually implement and analyze the Philippine conjuncture in the, from a Maoist analysis, but in the last few years in a series of articles um, in timely interventions into an international debate on a host of issues from our, around the world. So we do have a group. It is a truly a pleasure to have Professor Jose Maria Sison who will be presenting a paper on the Philippines Revolution. So I would Good afternoon, uh, fellow students of uh, Maoism and revolutionary movements. I submitted a paper that is too long. Even reading half of it would go beyond one hour. <laughs> so I will try to uh, present my paper orally uh, within 45 minutes or so. Otherwise, Drew would complain. <laughs> I noticed that he complained <laughs> when the Gautam was it just used 45 minutes. So uh, I follow the example. So uh, I'd like to give you, um, well, the subject assigned to me is development, current status, and prospects of Maoist theory and practice in the Philippines. Actually, the title given to me by Drew was development of Maoism, especially the current status. And uh, I added prospects, because when I saw uh, in uh, the releases about the event, uh, it speaks of Maoism in the 21st century. So I said, I must put in prospects. Huh? Uh, so, um, uh, what I'm going to do is to uh, develop uh, the subject under uh, a number of posts. I will explain what do we mean by Maoism. And then I will uh, uh, present uh, practically half of uh, the history of the Communist Party of the Philippines. Um, since uh, its founding, the or re-establishment, or even further back by two years, and the other half uh, would start from 1992 to uh, uh, the present. Why? Why that? Uh, uh, why those two divisions? It is uh, a convenient way of emphasizing how much is the influence of uh, Mao Zedong uh, on the Communist Party of the Philippines. Uh, and, but I would also try to show differences because of, uh, we follow basic principles, but uh, in the application of principles there are differences because there, there are uh, different conditions that must be taken into account. Okay, the, what do we mean by Maoism? We follow uh, the uh, 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 conventional definition of Maoism in the sense that it is it's supposed to refer to a certain stage in the making of proletarian revolutions. So this is a, this is a, a, a categorization uh, in the consideration of uh, social science. You know, there are three components of uh, uh, three components of uh, proletarian theory as established by Marx. Uh, philosophy, uh, political economy, and social science. 
But uh, when I was in China, uh, uh, somebody would tell us, oh, Mao contributed three more components in addition to the three old components. But I thought, uh, you know, such compo supposed new components, party building and rectification, people's war and cultural revolution, uh, they fall under social science. And, uh, uh, but cultural revolution as a social phenomenon is highly important. Important enough as to distinguish Mao from the previous two stages. The first stage was that of Marx and Engels. Huh? In the, um, that's in the period of free competition capitalism. It was a period in which uh, the um, uh, most important proletarian revolution was, of course, the Paris Commune, a prototypical event no? in which uh, the, uh, um, those in the first international uh, were not uh, in complete command, but um, there were those in the uh, uh, from the uh, first international who were involved but this was the first case in which the proletariat seized power for themselves and uh, this is a very important event uh, in terms of influence on the uh, uh, working class movement in Europe, uh, Marxism became the dominant uh, uh, ideological and political influence in the European trade union in the last quarter, uh, last decade of the 19th century. So that's the scope of, uh, of uh, uh, the stage of uh, Marxism, not to mention uh, uh, the first international and then also the second international. The uh, second stage would be that of Leninism, which would also include Stalin, because Stalin was the one who actually uh, worked to construct socialism uh, in uh, uh, Russia. Uh, Lenin died uh, after being uh, uh, shot after being wounded, uh, he would become sickly and uh, he died. Uh, but he, uh, he can still be considered uh, the father of the socialist revolution because the blueprint of the socialist revolution can be traced to Lenin. Uh, Leninism is supposed to be Marxism in the era of imperialism and proletarian revolution. And um, uh, emphatically proletarian revolution because for the first time you have a sustained, you have a sustained socialist revolution. Not like the nearly two months uh, uh, Paris Commune. You have a, uh, a socialist revolution uh, which ran from 1917 uh, uh, to the time that uh, the modern revisionism uh, uh, took over. <coughs> now, <coughs> Mao made important contributions to uh, Marxist philosophy and uh, uh, political economy. Um, Mao had the advantage of uh, learning from Marx and Lenin about philosophy, and he made original contributions. He really went deep into uh, uh, the matter of contradiction and practice as it is related to theory. And then of course, he, he applied it on socialist society, di materialist dialectics was applied by Mao um, in the form of recognizing classes within socialist society and properly handling them. So, uh, now, but uh, um, um, Mao had the advantage of, uh, of uh, being the most uh, powerful figure opposing modern revisionism. And then uh, this would lead to uh, uh, the uh, theory and practice of continuing revolution under proletarian dictatorship uh, in order to um, combat revisionism <coughs> and uh, uh, 
capitalism and consolidate socialism. Some people might say, oh, but uh, uh, you know, at this point in time, after 1983 and after 1989 to 1991, during the, those tumultuous events when revisionist uh, uh, regimes in the Soviet Union disintegrated, uh, there is not much left, or there is practically nothing left of, uh, of uh, socialism. Well, uh, that's something to consider, but um, um, the Cultural Revolution in China, the Great Proletarian Cultural Revolution in its own time, was a winner for 10 years. It won. Much, it's uh, it's uh, a period of victories much uh, longer than the Paris Commune, which served a very important purpose. Lessons were learned from the Paris Commune. Uh, learning lessons from it was started by Marx and Lenin. Learned from it and they knew how to establish the proletarian dictatorship in the in uh, what would become the Soviet Union. So I hope that's uh, that's clear. And um, uh, so the Philippine Communist Party accepts Mao Zedong thought of Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought. That's the old expression. Uh, upon the re-establishment of the Communist Party in 1995, uh, Maoism, the term Maoism was adopted to replace uh, or to be an alternative uh, to uh, Mao Zedong thought. Uh, there was no change of life, just uh, language alignment. Uh, uh, Mao Zedong thought no longer jumps up as different from uh, Marxism, Leninism in terms of uh, symmetry. Uh, so it's symmetrical. Uh, when you uh, put in uh, uh, Maoism alongside uh, uh, Marxism, Leninism, and, uh, but I, I think I was uh, uh, indirectly ahead of the Communist Party of the Philippines uh, in, in the, adopting the term <laughs> Maoism because I, I uh, uh, before the international seminar on uh, uh, Mao Zedong thought in Germany, I, uh, the Philippine comrades put um, held in September a a uh, seminar. Uh, Philippine State on uh, uh, Mao Zedong God, and I said, uh, fellow Maoist. <laughs> so that's an that's a, um, uh, a adaption of the term Maoism. Okay, but uh, um, you know the Philippines is still far from a socialist society that is trying to consolidate itself and prevent uh, revisionism and so on. No? Uh, so you, uh, that is my way of saying right away. Um, the Philippine Communist Party, Party learns most from Mao in terms of undertaking the new democratic revolution. Uh, in a semi-feudal semi society. And the Philippine Party learned much from uh, the uh, uh, study of Philippine history and Philippine conditions down to, you know, social investigations of particular cases. And uh, Mao taught us how to do class analysis, how to divide uh, of, uh, friends from enemies, uh, you know, in making a revolution, the first thing you conduct is to, you know, know your, uh, is to find out who are your friends and who are your enemies. <coughs> Even as we have learned from um, so much that is um, of uh, crucial importance, we also have some adaptations, to say the least, of differences, if you wish. Huh? because of different conditions. Um, in People's War, um, the uh, Chinese uh, People's Army started with regular mortile uh, forces uh, that were uh, taken away by uh, uh, communist leaders that were then um, allied with the Kuomintang. So they started actually uh, with uh, regular mobile for forces, forces uh, that were taken away by um, 
Ye Chen Ying, and so on. So uh, at first they tried to make some uh, insurrections in certain uh, areas. Uh, Nanchang was also one of, of the major insurrections, and upon the failure of these insurrection, insurrections, they uh, moved uh, to uh, to Shenkang San to join up with uh, the guerrilla units of uh, Mao Zedong. In the case of the Philippines, the Philippines is even more close to the beginning of the uh, People's War in uh, in uh, Vietnam, no? Because uh, we started, as they started, with guerrilla, uh, guerrilla warfare. But of course you can also argue that Mao <laughs> started the guerrilla warfare even, even before there was a taking away of these guards regiments under the communist commanders. Uh, but you know, even in Chinese history, uh, Nanchang uprising marks the uh, founding of the uh, People's Army. Uh, that's August 1. No? Anyway, uh, uh, another, uh, another thing that's different, uh, well, the country is very obvious, it's archipelagic. China is, a, is more of a vast uh, country. So, uh, in the specific characteristics of people's war, I would say, uh, and uh, what I say is uh, importantly against the prejudice that's difficult to make a, uh, a uh, revolution in an, in an island of 7,100, no? Uh, you know, if you wish to exaggerate the <laughs> archipelagic difficulty, <laughs> uh, 7,100, I would say, come on. There are 11 major islands which contain 94% of the people. <laughs> and and, and you know, in developing the, the, the party and the communist and the, the revolutionary movement, you start with the major islands, then you go to the minor islands. Uh, uh, as, in, as shown in the Philippine Revolution, sometimes you don't even have to uh, uh, make a bloody fight in the, the smaller islands. No? Uh, when you win, the major, when you you win the, uh, the major battles in the eleven islands, uh, people will run ahead uh, to proclaim the new government. No? So anyway, that's another thing that's different from uh, uh, there's a difference in yet similarity because you know uh, the um, that's not uprisings to see confiscate land in the 1930s. Well, in the Philippines, we, we tried to do that, but that was under the, uh, in the, uh, in earlier times. But uh, in the time of the re-established Communist Party, the, um, uh, there is a learning from the what we call the minimum a program of land reform, rent reduction, was adopted by the Chinese party during the patriotic war against uh, uh, Japan. Some concessions were given to landlords who, who would side with the uh, with the Communist Party Kuomintang Alliance against Japan, no? So, I've, I've shown some differences. But uh, <coughs> uh, let me get back to dividing uh, the history of the re-established party into two major parts. You know, the most important thing before the re-establishment of the party was the, uh, what say, the guidance of the ideas of Mao uh, in a rectification movement to um, uh, meet uh, the errors, uh, to confront the errors committed by the uh, leadership uh, in the old party. Uh, you know, the old party was established in 1930, and then it was, uh, re it was merged with the Socialist Party in 1938. All these events were carried out under the auspices of the common turn. And um, uh, something very unique in the Philippines developed uh, after, the, uh, after the death of the founders, uh, 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 the principal leaders were killed martyred by the Japanese. So the first of the Lava brothers became secretary general. So he was the right opportunist. Um, there was a time when they would do some um, metaphys metaphysical estimates of uh, winning the revolution in the Philippines. 
Uh, if we win the area around Mount Araya, then we win the whole of Central Luzon, which is the, the rice grain of the Philippines. If we win uh, Central Luzon, then we win uh, uh, Luzon. If we win Luzon, then we win the whole of the Philippines because it's the biggest island. Uh, that is uh, what I call metaphysical warfare. Uh, the old party leadership failed to uh, to send out uh, uh, expansion cadres, even when there were offers from different islands. But anyway, uh, the error of right opportunism this, uh, ran this way. Uh, there were companies established, they were called squadrons of the anti-Japanese army. Then, after the Japanese attacked Mount Arayan with 10,000 troops, and the leadership was almost um, terminated by the, the Japanese. Uh, they went into pessimism. Oh, we cannot do with these companies. They are easily uh, seen by the enemy and can be destroyed. So the lava issued the order. Uh, Divide, uh, I mean to say, yes, uh, fragment the, uh, the uh, companies into teams of five fighters each. Uh, well, it's a good thing that many did not follow that uh, order. But anyway, that order seemed to be uh, in accordance with the strategic plan of the U.S. Filipinos should not fight too much. They should uh, just watch and see the Japanese and report to General MacArthur. And they should wait uh, to fight only when the, Jap the Americans are already coming back. Huh? So that's the strategic plan. And. Um, and then uh, that's not the end of the rightism of uh, Vicente Lava. Um, he, uh, although he accepted the error of retreat for defense policy uh, after more than two years of uh, uh, of uh, following it, uh, he uh, under his uh, lead, he, he was demoted, by the way, uh, to general secretary to just one of three. Uh, secretaries and then uh, but he was responsible for the new line welcome the, <laughs> the return of the Commonwealth government uh, of the U and welcome the US and be ready to convert the people's army into a, a veterans uh, 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 organization and uh, people should uh, go into legal mass organizing so uh, that was the uh, right opportunism. Anyway, uh, this would have to be uh, combated, uh, criticized, and repudiated. The um, next lava would be Jose Lava. Uh, it looked like he, he learned from the right opportunism of his brother. Uh, so he decided, or his uh, the central committee which he led, decided to wage all-out armed struggle. Huh? Nice sounding for, uh, for advocates of people, so, but you know that uh, it was adventurous, left opportunist. Uh, he thought of uh, the geometric progression in the number of the People's Army because people are disgusted with the corruption of the uh, uh, puppet uh, government and he did not uh, consider the necessity of painstaking mass work and land reform. So, um, then, then um, uh, well, there was one successful wave of attacks against the uh, enemy from camps, uh, isolated bases uh, in the Sierra Madre. But then uh, they would be countered easily because, you know, uh, they, they, um, the, the camps could easily be identified where they were. Uh, the mass base was not deep going. Uh, people, the, uh, the peasants were not really that hot in fighting uh, against the government because in the first place, there was no land reform to deepen their commitment to, uh, <coughs> to the revolution. And uh, so, uh, after the Politburo Inn, which was the real leadership inn, means being in Manila, after it was rounded up by Magsaysay, the Politburo out in the countryside decided uh, uh, to reduce armed activity. 
1954, it decided to convert the convert the uh, in, uh, the People's Army into an organizational brigade. Uh, but what remained of the People's Army uh, did not follow that anyway. But anyway, uh, there was no leadership to revive the People's War uh, by in 1954. Then he adopted another liquidationist policy, uh, this time directed against the party. He's, uh, he, uh, he adopted the so-called single file policy, which meant uh, he, the general sector secretary, um, would uh, make research, read newspapers, and then he would make write his long political transmission from his hideout, from which he was disconnected uh, with the masses or any armed uh, uh, group. Uh, that was the kind of situation I would uh, that the, the party, the old party, was in when I joined it in 1962. There was not a single party uh, branch left. No? Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I, I thought, uh, uh, I was flattered, I was only 23 years old and I was uh, recruited and put right away into the executive committee. Uh, but uh, when I read about this story of Li Jinping, uh, he was only 18. <laughs> so I was humbled by uh, 